Lord, and thank you, David, and thank you for the staff for all that you do. We really appreciate it. Well, good morning, everybody. I know it's a little early on a Saturday, and we've got a cram-packed day. As uh, my, uh, Linda and my professor used to say at RPI, I want to give people their money's worth. And he said, sometimes they don't want their money's worth. But nonetheless, the students always got a full and, and productive day from Jerry. And so what we have today is a full and productive day for APG. So it's my honor to be president, uh, your president for APG for this year. And we're just, we're celebrating our 100th anniversary and we are now in the what next phase for what are we doing for our 101st. So why are we here? Now I know that's a bit of an existential opening, but what I'm really referring to is why are we at this time at the University of Houston campus? And so I wanted to give you some background information. First of all, it's done amazing things. It's a tier one university recognized throughout the world, and it's a premier uh, school in, in Houston. In the Earth and Atmospheric Science, there are 400 undergrads, 200 grads, and I'm rounding off approximately, but it's substantial. It used to be up around 900 combined. Now it's in the 600, but still very significant. 39 full-time faculty, impressive list of science presentations. When you look at the programs that the students are presenting at our meetings and submitting to our publications, not just APG, but other professional societies, it's extremely impressive. And one of the things uh, for me is having living here in Houston and being active in the Houston Geological Society for many years, it's been a long and fruitful relationship. And I remember in back in 1999-2000, a friend of mine, U of H geology grad, David Moe, came to me when I was president of HGS and said, you know, there's this thing called the Bob Sheriff Lecture. And it's kind of exciting. We're doing it at the University of Houston. But you know what? We really should just get together with industry. So why don't we hold the Sheriff Lecture with the uh, Houston Geological Society so that students can meet industry and industry can meet students. And so, by the way, there's one coming up next week, next the Monday after Thanksgiving, November 27th. It's like the 18th Sheriff Lecture. So this thing has a little bit of legs. And so these are some of the things that are in my mind as I think, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing. Let's get together industry with uh, an industry-focused academic program. And we're focused on business and prioritizing our program and Notice how we have revenue growth, and we're trying to do it in innovative ways. APG has been doing a very disciplined job over the last several years, starting with John Hope is in the back, and other uh, presidents have been cutting and working to be more effective for APG, and so we're continuing that, but we're also looking at ways that APG maybe could grow some revenue, so we have a business focus. Member engagement, the House of Delegates, plays a key role in this. We're retaining and recruiting. That's a very important thing. Our membership is key to our success. But one of the things that we're realizing is that even though APG has 30,000 members, we have a much bigger sphere of influence because there's about 70,000 people who come to our meetings, who log onto our web page, and who basically access APG content. So even though we have 30,000 members, we have a much bigger community. And so using, getting that community involved in ways that can help drive commerce can also be a positive for our membership. And then my final topic is my most passionate topic is technical content and making sure that it's useful content, not just top-notch science, but science that our energy finders and professionals can put to good use. And so in the panel that I mentioned with Ramanan, I was on that panel two nights ago, and there were a lot of analysts, and I was happy to be, proud to be the only geoscientist there. And I, you know, I'm happy to tell you that I was the only one who showed a map and a cross section. A lot of graphs and charts. But I, I want to just take a, a couple moments. These slides, I think, are strategic to our content. So you're going to hear shortly Bob Fricklin is going to talk about super basins, a concept that he and Pete Stark have developed. But a super basin, you can read the definitions there. They're basically the world's richest petroleum basins, and the Permian Basin is a prototype. And you can see the cross-section on the bottom, the Midland Basin on the right, and the uh, Delaware Basin. It's a collection of basins. And if you look at the, this is from Tom Ewing's talk just a couple of days ago, 
at uh, GCAGS. He has a great talk on a tale of two super basins, the Gulf of Mexico. By the way, we're in a super basin, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Permian Basin. And so part of the analysis is if you look on this cross section, let's see if I can. The key source rocks, there are three key source rocks, the Simpson, the Barnett, and the Woodford. And they're all deep in the sedimentary column, which is very powerful because it provides all of the sediments above access as the charge works its way up and there's a big regional seal. So those are some of the, in one simple diagram, some of the key components of why the Permian is as spectacular as it is. And if you look at the thermal maturity, you can see that the Delaware Basin is, is uh, mature for gas, but the entire greater collection of basins have all been through the oil window. So that's one of the fundamental geologic reasons why it's a super basin. But what I think is important is the upscale. So we, and we were talking with Bob Fricklin earlier, so there are many super basins that meet the criteria, but if you look at just the top five, these are the ones that are really making an impact and have the potential to be huge game changers. So we are focusing on these super basins. And so basically, how many people here in this room live in a super basin? And I would say probably all of us in the Gulf Coast, those of us from the Appalachians, those of us from the Rocky Mountains, uh, Western Canada sedimentary basin, South America, we've got a couple super basins. So it's a very, very large part of AEPG's not only where we live, but also where we work and focus. And so understanding these basins is something that can be valuable for decades to come. So the world is watching the techniques that are being developed. And there's potentially giant reserves, 800 billion barrels or more. And of course, each of the areas are not equally accessible. So this is part of the discussion about the impact on economy, environment, geopolitics. And there's a lot of above ground choices that need to be made. But in the end, I think what's really important is geoscience plays an incremental value add role. And that the APG strategy, as I said in my very first column in July in the Explorer, is to go where the energy is. And I'm channeling Marlon down here, doing my best. And so it's great to observe all of these things. But you know what's really important is to have an action plan. And so here's, here's our plan. We are going to have an event in March 27th to 29th here in Houston, where we have already about 25 speakers, several in this room, and people want to get in to be, there. There, a handful of them are APG Outstanding Explorers in the approximately 20 Discovery Thinking Forums that I had the privilege to chair over the last 10 years. Our very best papers, our very best speakers, I've gone out and asked them to be the representative for their super basins at this conference. and so. We're going to have a technology transfer day and a half. We're going to have an opportunity to learn about the practices in each of the basins so that other basins can learn from us and they can make intelligent choices. And part of this that I'm working on with our editor, electric editor, uh, Barry Katz, is we're looking for papers for the bulletin. And we are working on tomorrow after our executive committee tomorrow afternoon, Barry and I are meeting, we're looking we have about eight in, in the column on the right, in green, we have people who have spoken up that they would write a paper for the bulletin on their super basin and include petroleum systems components and, and various uh, other aspects. And we're looking to fill up as many of the basins as we can so we can roll that out in the next couple of years so that in the end we will have useful content, published content on super basins. Because as we all know, things that get used a lot in the publishing world are textbooks. Other things are really good basin overview papers that people go back to again and again and again. Because if you understand the geoscience and you see the layering of the source rocks and you see the layering of the sediments and the structure of the basin and the thermal maturity, we're an innovative bunch. We keep coming up with new ideas. So these old basins that just keep on giving, if we have some good foundational geoscience on them, I think that this could be a resource that could be hugely valuable to our members for decades. If you're interested in being involved in one of the papers, come see Barry or myself. And I really would appreciate that. We also have a very special person here that I've gotten to enjoy meeting is Michael Vandenberg, our general chair for the ACE 
2018 meeting in May in Salt Lake City, Utah. Michael, would you please, there's Michael in the back. Michael, we're going to ask you to say a few words to us tomorrow about what's happening at ACE. And I got to tell you that it's going to be an incredible program. And I hope that we all can attend to support this program. It's going to, the theme, you can see, let's see, I am looking for the theme. Michael, what is the theme? Bridging Fundamentals and Innovation. What a great theme for the 101st APG Convention. Thank you, Michael. All right, and one of the things, this is in, in the work that Bob Merrill and I did on the giant fields of the most recent decade series, I wanted to bring this out. This was in my last column. So we've talked about super basins, going back to the world's oilless basins, but we often get asked, you know, there's still a lot of offshore, deep water, and potentially ultra deep water plays that are out there in new places. And so this is an interesting thing. These are the thousand fields, giant fields, that have been found. You can see most of them are onshore. A lot of them are hugging the coastline. There are some that are in deeper water in the Gulf of Mexico and pre salt of Brazil. But what I think is interesting, and I just like to offer for food for thought, because my point here is that there's a lot of things for us to do for a long, long time. My point is, those yellows and oranges are sedimentary thickness packages of fans in the deep and ultra-deep water. And a lot of them haven't really been explored yet because it's expensive and it's ultra-deep. And it's like, well, we don't need to do that right now. But you know what? There may come a time when those will be um, interesting places. And there, I have a tip from a good friend of mine that there is actually some leasing going on on a lot of deep and ultra deep water plays right now. Not for today, but for eight to ten years. And it's very interesting, some of the uh, companies that are involved in that. These are the recent, some of the recent discoveries. So this is the wrap-up. So, APG Second Century. Here's what I would say from the preceding comments. The potential for abundant affordable energy looks like it's going to continue long into the future. And abundance is an amazing thing because it gives us options for choices. This came up in our panel discussion on Thursday. It's not that many people, some people may not want the kinds of energy choices we're making in the United States. They, and they may have other riches and endowments and they may prefer to pursue uh, geothermal or more wind energy or more nuclear energy or various types, and these are choices that societies make. But having abundance not only gives us choices, but it really, and this is right out of Scott Tinker's playbook, it gives us the three E's. It gives us the energy need we need for a better life. It, what it's done for, at least in North America, what it's done for our economy has been incredible. And actually, by going back to a lot of the old places and using the footprints that already exist, and making some choices where we're swapping out clean burning natural gas for coal and other synergies, we're actually having a very positive impact on the environment that doesn't really get out in industry, out of industry very much. And then these are some other, if you have three E's, so here's three S's. And this came out of a conversation that Denise Cox and I were having. So super basins, sustainability, and security. My things are different in the last couple of years. <laughs> North America has got a lot of resources, and this is a geopolitical game changer. Everybody is quite, quite aware that energy equals prosperity. And so what I said in the panel Thursday night, and what I'm saying here today, is I am profoundly emotional, and I, I feel passionately that our energy industry has really contributed to make the world a better place. I am so proud of what this industry has done. I am so proud to be a part of this industry. I'm so proud of all of us and you who are contributing to this success. And I think that APG plays a key role. I gotta tell you, we've done it for 100 years. I see every reason why we're gonna be continuing to do it. We're, we're, we are the enablers to provide the technology so that we can deliver the energy that genuinely does make the world a better price. So with that, um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for contributing to the conference. We've got a fantastic lineup. 
and uh, I look forward to having a chance to visiting with you during the breaks and throughout the day. And uh, so with that, I just want to say a big thank you for being here.